All right, guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and uh, we're going to go ahead and start covering Chapter 7 from the text. And Chapter 7 has to do with logical agents. And these agents are a little bit different than what we've seen so far in that they're going to do a form of crude reasoning. Right? They're going to do a form of crude reasoning. So um, they're going to use logic to make decisions. Okay, And so in order to... In order to understand how they work, we're going to have to go through and learn a little bit about logic and some of the basics of logic. And so, you know, we're going to kind of move off into la la land a little bit here for the next couple of chapters, uh, almost diverting into study of philosophy, right? Uh, you know, how do you know what you know kind of thing? And how do you represent knowledge in certain ways? And how can you tell that your reasoning is accurate or how do you do reasoning in the first place how how do you know that something implies something else right and so some basic rules of uh, some simple logics are going to need to be studied so that way we can understand how these agents work and therefore how you can program them right so how a computer can reason right so that's that's what we're going to start talking about uh, now, so chapter seven is about logical log uh, logical agents, and you know, as you probably know, being a human, when you make decisions, you're going through and performing some form of reasoning, right? So you're having to decide, well, does this make sense? And so you're doing that reasoning through a representation of knowledge, which you know about the world, your internal view of the world, right? What you believe is right and wrong, what you know to be real or not real, uh, that sort of thing, right? What you believe is true, not true. Okay, so you're going through and you're re reasoning based off of that knowledge, okay? So in AI, you can do kind of a similar approach. And so, the way it's done with artificial intelligence is through the use of so-called knowledge-based agents, right? So to get through this, to understand how this works, like I was saying just a second ago, we got to study a bit of logic. And a lot of times in the past, you know, CS101 students, intro to computer science students ask me, you know, and, I, and I've recommended in the past to say, well, you know, what are some electives I should take? And I say, philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. Uh, here's where that would have paid off, right? Not just in terms of how you create if statements, um, you know, how, you know, you deal with Boolean values in a program, but, you know, now trying to figure out how a knowledge-based agent, a logic agent uh, can work, right? So. Um, we need to study a bit of logic, propositional logic, and first order logic is what we're going to talk about. Okay, so section seven point one is talking about these knowledge-based agents, and so a knowledge-based agent has a representation of its world, right? Just like with humans, you have an internal representation of your knowledge of the world. Logic-based agents are going to have a similar kind of internal representation and that is going to be built on a knowledge base right so logic agents uh, are going to be knowledge based they're going to be knowledge based agents and so they require a knowledge base that's made up of sentences now what's a sentence well a sentence is basically built using a knowledge representation language and these sentences are assertions about the world that the agent is um, operating in a claim of fact about the world okay now I have to give you another definition here an axiom you might have heard that term before in math courses these are just things that are assumed to be true right and in our context an axiom is a sentence that is not derived from other sentences. It stands alone. You don't need any other sentence to be able to build this sentence. It's just assumed to be true, okay? So our knowledge base is gonna need to be able to grow 
and we're going to need to be able to ask questions of our knowledge base. We're going to need to be able to think about things. We're going to need to be able to reason. So we're going to need to be able to ask questions of our knowledge base. So we're going to add and query our knowledge using, you know, you can call them, you know, functions or we can refer to uh, these actions that we can take as tell and ask, right? So we'll add sentences to our knowledge base by performing a tell and we'll ask a question or we'll perform a query on our knowledge base by performing an ask. Okay, now this process may involve inference. And inference here means that we're creating new sentences that we can add to our knowledge base from existing ones, right? So inference uh, is going to allow us to come up with an answer from existing knowledge, right? So inference follows that an answer comes from what has been told, right? So in other words, let me put it another way. In our knowledge base, we're going to tell our knowledge base, hey, here's some information, here's some facts about the world, here's what we know to be true, right? So an inference would be a new sentence, a new fact about the world, a new um, realization about the world based off of things we already know, right? That's what an inference is. So here is a figure that shows us, you know, a function for a generic knowledge-based agent using their their uh, their pseudocode, right? So got a function, call it KB agent, and so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to infer what action should we take given what we know about the world and what we have um, just perceived in the world, right? So you perceive something in the world, you have some knowledge, a knowledge base about the world, what you believe about the world, now what should you do in response to that perception? So this function would take a percept as an argument, that's its input, and then you have to decide what to do, returns an action back to the agent saying, okay, here you go. So. You know, the sensors perceive something in the world. Uh, this function goes through and says, all right, let's figure out what action we need to take. Returns an action that is then passed on to the actuators to be to carry out, you know, the, the decision. So what's persistent? What's the global? A knowledge base. Okay, knowledge base. Knowledge of everything that we know about the world up to this point. All the sentences that make an assertion of what we understand about the world. T, which is a counter, okay, that's something that's also persistent, a global variable, if you will. Initialize that to zero, and that indicates the passage of time. So the way this function work it works is, let's perform that tell, let's add something to our knowledge base, we're telling our knowledge base, KB, um, some new sentence, some new assertion about the world that's based off of the percept, the thing that the agent perceived, and an instance of time. So update the knowledge base with a new assertion, and then ask the knowledge base what we should do based off of some query that we have to build. So we ask the knowledge base a question, and T is for a particular time. At this particular time, you know, what should we do? And so then the knowledge base will indicate, well, here's the action you should take. Okay, fine. Okay, and then we'll tell the uh, knowledge base, well, here's the action we're gonna do or that we just did at this particular time. Okay, and then you know, to update how the world changed and then we increment our uh, time counter and then the function returns the action. So basically it goes like this. Hey, we just perceived something. The, 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 the uh, knowledge base based agent, that logic agent says, look, I just perceived something. Let's uh, go ahead and you know take make note of the time, what we perceived, feed that into our knowledge base. Now let's ask the knowledge base, hey, what should we do? Right? I told you what I just saw. Now what should we do based off of what we know about the world and what we just perceived? And then we get that action, and then we say to the knowledge base, okay, based off of that action, here's what we're gonna do at this particular time. Right? And so we update the knowledge base and how we have modified the world based off of that action. And then we return that action. 
for the actuators to uh, perform. Okay. All right, so how do you modify the behavior for your knowledge-based agent, for this agent that's using logic, right? So this is going to be done at the knowledge level, right, at the knowledge level. So in other words, what you're doing is you're informing the agent through its knowledge base, hey, here's what your goals are, here's what we want you to do. And you're also going to tell the agent, here's what you know about the world. Here's what you know about the world, here's what you believe you can do, here's all the actions you can take, um, and here's what your goals are, here's what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Now, an example, automated taxi, let it know, hey, there's the Bay Bridge. Okay, so that thing exists. That's a fact about the world. Tell the taxi, okay, here's your goal. We want you to go from San Francisco to Oakland. Okay, now you're going to have to take the Bay Bridge to go from San Francisco to Oakland. So the taxi will know to cross the bridge because you said there's the bridge, right? And, you know, we also would have told it that San Francisco exists, that Oakland exists. We would have said that too. That would be in the knowledge base. And we'd say, okay. Bay Bridge, San Francisco, Oakland, you know those things exist. Now go from San Francisco to Oakland. So then the taxi can infer, well, I should take the Bay Bridge to get from San Francisco to Oakland. Now at the implementation level, in terms of how you code it, it can be done in lots and lots and lots of ways. And so we're going to see um, a very simple example uh, in a little bit, um, you know, for your next, for your last major programming project. You know, using Prolog is probably the easiest way to, to do that. Okay, so how to build it. Tell the agent what it needs to know, right? We have the declarative approach, that's one possibility. Using tell sentences, as I was just explaining, one by one, we're filling those in until the agent knows what to do in its environment, right? So you have your knowledge base, you set this up. Prolog is a logic-based language that makes this really easy, right? Or you can build up your own knowledge inference engine, but again, we're gonna play with that later. Or a procedural approach where you program in everything using a bunch of maybe if-else statements, for example, okay? So there's the declarative approach, there's a procedural approach. Procedural approach is what you're probably the most familiar with or, or what would be um, intuitive, right? You're thinking about procedural programming language, you know, doing stuff with functions and writing a bunch of, you know, if statements. That's, that's what you're thinking, C++, Java, all that kind of stuff, right? Declarative approach is more like taking a, a, a logic-based approach, and there are languages like Prolog that are set up to make that really easy. Okay, now the best agents that are out there, the most sophisticated, use a combination of both, right? There are certain things that you can, certain problems you can solve faster by maybe, you know, using a little bit of procedural coding, um, and then maybe a little bit of, you know, declarative, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of logic language, a little bit of you know, doing those tell sentences, a little bit of knowledge base, you know, you can kind of blend them together to get you um, your best performance out of the agent. 